A lot of people seem to think because they're a foreigner in Thailand, they can only go to the private hospitals, but you can go to any hospital in Thailand just like the Thai people can, even military hospitals. Public hospitals operated by the government only charge about one third what private hospitals in Thailand charge. Of the five top rated hospitals in Thailand, three of them are public government operated hospitals, not private. They don't advertise this, they don't volunteer it, but many private hospitals have a membership card that you can buy for almost nothing, like 100 baht, and it can give you 10 to 20% off the total cost of your medical services. Many of the most sought after surgeons that work at the most expensive hospitals in Thailand also work at the government hospitals, so you can get the same doctor for a third of the price. Sawati Kap, Sabaidi Mai Kap, and welcome to Chiang Mai Thailand. We're going to talk about hospitals, and it's a really important topic, especially for Westerners that are moving to Thailand, because there's a lot of anxiety over getting medical care here. I want to talk about everything you need to know about finding the best hospital, the best doctor at the lowest price, and I'm gonna tell you stuff that I promise you, you're not gonna find on any other video on YouTube. So stick around and we'll get right to it. Just in case you're completely new to the subject of medical care in Thailand, let me start off with something to put your mind at ease. Uh, medical care in Thailand is truly excellent. Um, I was born and raised in Southern California, where I would say the quality of medical care is, is pretty high. And I would honestly put Thailand medical care on a par with Western medical care in California, except a heck of a lot cheaper. Here are a few quick facts. The average Thai doctor appointment costs only about 500 baht. It's actually normal to get a doctor's appointment the same day, even with a specialist. Thai doctors rarely have separate offices. Almost all medical services, even routine medical care, is provided at a hospital. Let me tell you a, a personal story. Um, I live in Chiang Mai, Thailand, which if you don't know it, Chiang Mai is the second largest city in Thailand, and it's uh, up in the north. Maybe, I don't know, a couple years ago, three years ago, I had a severe stomach ache that had lasted for, for days. And about nine o'clock on a Saturday night, I decided I had to go to the emergency room. That was my first time ever to go to a Thai hospital, so I was a little bit anxious about it. And I went to Chiang Mai Ram Hospital, which is a private hospital, but it's one of the, it's, it's a bit of an older one. So I went in there nine o'clock at night to the emergency room, and I've been to emergency rooms in the United States, bringing other people there for emergencies. So I was prepared for the worst, and I found out just the opposite. First off, nice, clean waiting room. Uh, I only waited 15 minutes before I was called in to see a nurse who spoke English. Immediately thereafter, I met with a doctor who spoke English, um, and he talked about my stomach problems. I don't really want to talk about exactly what it is, because it's kind of embarrassing. Constipation man, constipation man. Hey, nothing's really moving, but he's eating lots of bran. All right, constipation, yes. I was constipated for days and in a lot of pain. Um, so I met with a doctor, uh, he prescribed some medicines. The point of the story is I had excellent care, delivered very quickly, English speaking doctor, and the total cost for the nurse, the doctor, and the medicine was 1,275 baht. I went back the next day because he told me he wanted an x-ray and for me to see an internist, a specialist just to make sure everything was okay. So I thought, all right, now I'm really gonna get hit with the big bill. <laughs> I went in to see the specialist. Um, I was walked with a nurse over to get my x-ray. She stayed with me. She walked back with me, back to see the same doctor who immediately analyzed the x-ray. None of the stuff about what I'm used to in the United States where, hey, we'll get back to you a week later and tell you the results. 
I immediately went back to meet with that same doctor. And the, to the cost of that total day, the x-ray, two visits with the doctor, what was it? 1500 something baht. I mean, just incredibly, incredibly cheap. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the different levels of hospitals that exist in Thailand because they each have a different quality of care, um, a different standard of care, but not maybe the things that you think. So let's talk about that right now. There's two different types of hospitals in Thailand. There's private hospitals, and that's pretty self-explanatory what that is. And there are also government-operated public hospitals. And it's in this second category that there are the most different levels that are available, each at a different cost and each offering a slightly different level of care. Probably at the lowest level would be the public welfare hospital. Um, that's the kind of hospital that a local Thai is gonna be going to where they can get pretty much free medical care based upon their public welfare card. They don't have nationalized medicine in Thailand, but something somewhat close to that. Westerners are entitled to go to the same hospitals. Um, that's the lowest level. A little bit above that would be military hospitals. They don't have a lot of those in Thailand, but those are also open to Westerners. The next level up from that, and you might merge these two together, would be government hospitals that have some private funding, and usually it's through a religious organization. That type of hospital and university hospitals are typically seen as a higher level. And the next level up from that is kind of a hybrid. It's a public hospital, basically, typically a university public hospital, but they have separate wings that are operated almost like private hospitals, typically geared towards Westerners and well-to-do ties that offer a lot of the amenities of a private hospital, but at a fraction of the cost. So if you're wondering, well, what's the difference between all these different types of hospitals? You know, many people will tell you, and I, I tend to agree, that the quality of medical care in terms of the actual surgery, let's say, is going to be about the same. In fact, a lot of the same doctors that work at the most prestigious, expensive private hospitals also work at public hospitals. Sometimes it's because they got their education there and they've got an obligation to continue to work there, but there's other reasons as well. But you can get sometimes the most sought after surgeon at a private hospital for a fraction of the cost at a public hospital. We'll talk in a minute how you'd actually find out which doctors do that. So if the quality of medical care that you're getting at an expensive private hospital is about the same as a mid-tier public hospital, what's the difference between the two types of hospitals? Well, the difference is really the comfort that's provided to you as the patient. When you go to a private hospital, for example, here is uh, one of my local hospitals in Chiang Mai. This is uh, Bangkok Hospital, which is a very popular chain of hospitals throughout Thailand. Very nice exterior, very nice lobby. They've got a baby grand piano up on the second floor. And of course, the same thing is true in other cities, especially Bangkok. If you go to a, a hospital like the most prestigious hospital in Thailand, Bam Rum Rad, you're going to find a luxurious lobby like a five-star hotel. And by the way, a free bonus to this video is you're going to learn how to say the names of all these hospitals <laughs> because they don't look anything like you would pronounce them. For example, uh, the hospital I just mentioned, Westerners always say, Bumran grad, which is, is fine with a Westerner, but if you get into a taxi cab and you need to go there, they're not going to understand what you're saying. It's actually pronounced Bamunumrad. So free bonus to this video. So if you want a beautiful lobby, uh, if you want very nice private rooms to, to, to recuperate from your surgery in, you're going to want to go to a private hospital. Um, public hospitals are quite often going to have multiple beds in a room, sometimes five, sometimes ten. Um, those are very affordable and cheap, so if you don't have insurance, then, I mean, that can be a great option, but it's not what you might be expecting as a Westerner. Another big difference is how long you wait for an appointment. If you go to a public hospital for your first appointment, 
Typically, you have to arrive first thing in the morning. In fact, you might arrive at like six or seven in the morning and you'll get a number and you wait to be called before you're assigned a doctor. For subsequent visits, you can typically make an appointment and it's not so bad. But even then, you're probably going to have to wait half a day. Um, for your first appointment, count on spending your entire day at the hospital. But if you go to a private hospital, it's more like uh, going to the hospital or the doctor in the West. You have an appointment, they'll typically get you right in to see the doctor, and it's a very smooth process, and they really cater to your comfort and your emotional satisfaction. There's also a difference in the equipment being used. Um, if you go to a public hospital at the lower level, they're going to have the equipment that does the job, but it's not going to be the newest, fanciest version like they're going to have as a private hospital. So if those kind of things are important to you, then you go to a private hospital. Now, if you have insurance, um, they're going to have approved providers and they're going to have plenty of good private hospitals listed there. A lot of the information I'm giving you right now is for people that don't have insurance and it's really important for them to find the best deal that they can because they don't have insurance covering what they need services for. And if you're kind of wondering, you know, what is the cost differential? I'm going to give you an exact example, but a little bit later in this video, um, I've chosen one particular surgical procedure, which is one of the most commonly done in the United States and also frequently done in Thailand. And I'm going to give you the basic price range at each of the different hospital levels. So you can see if you had the exact same surgery done in the United States, as opposed to a private hospital, as opposed to a private clinic within a government hospital, as opposed to the lower level clinic. I'm going to actually break that down for you. So let's talk about how you on your own can basically evaluate the quality of a hospital that you might be considering. There's a lot of different neutral organizations and licensing organizations that do rating services for hospitals. And the criteria that they use seem to be actual important criteria. These aren't organizations that, that give you a gold seal just because you paid a fee. Uh, they're actually analyzing critical data and patient satisfaction surveys. So I basically use four different tools to come up with the best list of hospitals for you or how you can find them on your own. Uh, one of them is the JCI, that stands for Joint Commission International. Uh, they licensed 54 hospitals. I shouldn't say licensed. They've, they've given sort of a seal of approval for 54 hospitals in Thailand. So you'll see them referred to as the JCI. You can find them online. Some people refer to it as the TJC, which would refer to the Joint Commission instead of Joint Commission International. Another good resource is Newsweek magazine. Since 2019, they've been publishing an annual guide of hospitals, and they actually give a rating of the top 30 hospitals in Thailand. The JCI doesn't rank them. They just approve 54 hospitals you're approved or you're not. But Newsweek actually gives a ranking from 1 to 30. You're welcome to pause it to look at it in more detail and, and find the hospitals that might be of interest to you or the different regions. Most are in Bangkok, but they are scattered throughout Thailand. So let's take a quick look at the top hospitals in Bangkok. The number one hospital, extremely popular, also extremely expensive, at least by Thai standards, is Bam Rum Rad. Very luxurious, very, very popular. The second on the list is actually a public hospital, Siri Rad. Now, Siri Rad is one of the hospitals that has basically a private hospital within Siri Rad. That hospital is called Piya Matharat Garun. Um, some of these private hospitals are right on the same premises as the hospitals. Sometimes they're down the street, sometimes they're in the same building, sometimes they're actually in a whole different part of town. Next on the list is Samiti Wade. That is uh, another private hospital. The next two, though, are public hospitals. And uh, hey, here's a nice bonus when you're trying to say these words. <laughs> uh, the fourth one on the list is just referred to as Chula Hospital by everybody. And the next one down, everyone just calls Rama Hospital. <laughs> so that makes it a lot, a lot easier. Now, number seven on the list is Bangkok Hospital. Um, they are all over Thailand. And I've got to tell you something about my experience with Bangkok Hospital on a, on a personal note. Um, I, I had to go to a, and this was in uh, 
the Bangkok hospital in Chiang Mai, probably the same anywhere in Thailand. I had to go for some physical therapy, so I went multiple times, and I don't, Joy doesn't need to hear this. I have to say that the nurses at Bangkok Hospital were among the most gorgeous women I have ever seen. I mean, it was like going to the Playboy Mansion if Hugh Hefner liked skinny young Thai women. I mean, they were incredibly beautiful, all spoke fluent English, the nicest people you could ever want to meet. So, so just a little uh, free bonus for you there. Now, as a good example of the statement that I made before and, and backing up what I'm telling you that sometimes the best hospitals are not the expensive private ones, there's only one hospital that made the list in Chiang Mai, and it's not a private hospital. It's actually a public hospital, Maharat. Um, they have a private wing called Sipat. Uh, which is very popular within Thailand. This, by the way, is a university hospital. You're also going to see on this top 30 list hospitals outside of the Bangkok and Chiang Mai region, such as in Konggang and Songla. Let me touch on a couple other geographical areas that really aren't addressed on this list. If you are in the uh, Phuket area, Vashira Hospital is very well thought of. If you're in Pattaya, the reality is, although there's good hospitals in Pattaya and the Bangkok Hospital is very popular there, for serious surgeries, most people just choose to go to Bangkok because it's reasonably close. So I want to tell you now a couple things that most people don't know about. So these are going to be in the secret category. We have to lower the cone of silence. So um, two things. Number one, most people don't know that even the best, most sought after, most expensive private doctors at hospitals like the Bangkok Hospital also work for public hospitals where you can get the same service for a half or a third of what you would pay at the public hospital. So how do you find that out? How do you find out if the, the doctor that you've heard great things about at the Bangkok Hospital is also working at your local public hospital? Well, you can ask. That's one way to do it. You can also check websites because quite often a hospital website will list their doctors. For example, here is the website for Bangkok Hospital in Chiang Mai. You can choose the specialty. You can check English as the chosen language. And then you can see all the doctors that are available. What you can do, and you really need the help of a Thai friend because if you Google the doctor's name as it's written in English, it's usually not going to come up with any results. But if you type in their Thai name with Thai character alphabets on a Thai keyboard and you Google that, quite often you can find out the public hospital where they work. So there's a little tip. The other tip I want to give you is hospital membership cards. Um, and I kind of stumbled across this because hospitals don't, for the most part, advertise it. They don't volunteer it. You just have to know about it and ask about it. So I'll give you an example at Chiang Mai Ram Hospital. I know that's regional in Chiang Mai, but the same thing applies in Bangkok and many other private hospitals, is you can buy a membership card is only 100 baht. It's basically nothing. And it will give you a 10% discount on not everything but a majority of the treatments that you get there, as well as a hospital room, up to 10,000 baht. If you go over 10,000 baht, you get 20% off. I mean, it's an incredible deal, and all you've got to do is ask for it. Now, one hospital that actually does make public and advertise their membership card is Bangkok Hospital. It's called the Shibatana card. Basically, that means good health. There's three different levels of cards that you can buy and one for a child. So for adults, there's the gold card, the platinum card, and the diamond card. And they respectively cost 5,000 baht, 14,000 baht, and 40,000 baht. The 5,000 baht card is good for one year. The 14,000 baht is for two years. And the 40,000 baht one is for three years. The gold card offers a 30% discount on most rooms and 10% off certain medical services. The Platinum card offers 40% off most rooms and 15% off medical services, at least many medical services. And the Diamond level, 50% off most rooms 
and still 15% off most medical services. Personally, I thought when I looked at these benefits and unless your medical bills are going to be extremely high, I don't know that this is a great deal like the one that I mentioned at Chiang Mai Ram and other hospitals offer at a lower cost. In fact, some hospitals offer them for free. You just have to ask. So I put on the screen for you a few minutes ago the top 30 hospitals in order according to Newsweek magazine, and they incorporated research from Statista. Um, I mentioned also the organization, the JCI. Let me give you an actual screenshot of basically what that looks like. I'll put in the description the exact link so that you can get to this page for uh, Thailand hospitals that are approved by the JCI. But here's a sample page you can look at. This lists one hospital, it tells you the date of accreditation. And for some hospitals like here, it will list the specialties within the hospital that either have accreditation or maybe it was removed for some reason. Now, I can't tell you exactly why something would be removed and what that means. I actually called the JCI multiple times and emailed them to try and get more information on, on what that means. And I never got an answer. So it's up to you to determine what that might mean. Personally, I would think that if the hospital itself is approved, particularly if the same hospital is on the Newsweek list, that it's a pretty top level hospital. So now let's talk about actual medical costs. It's one thing to say Thailand is a lot cheaper and I gave you an example of my own hospital visit, but let's take one particular surgical procedure and I chose a total knee replacement. So both joints being replaced. This is very common in America also somewhat common in Thailand. So if you got that procedure in the United States, according to the Journal of Orthopedic Surgery and Research, the average cost is 29,300 in the United States. And I know it can be a lot more because one of my friends paid over $100,000, or I should say his insurance company did, for his total knee replacement. But let's look at what the costs are in Thailand. Now these are gonna vary based upon where you are in the country and which hospital you go to, but these are pretty average ranges you're gonna find at each level of hospital. Let's start with a private hospital. Bangkok Hospital actually lists their fee right on their website, 587,000 baht. What about if you go to the somewhat intermediate level hospital level that we talked about, which is a public hospital with a private wing. For example, in Chiang Mai, it would be Sipat. In Bangkok, it might be Siri Rad, Piya Maharut Garun. Now there you're gonna pay between 200 and 350,000 baht on average. So you're getting basically a Western level of care in terms of your room, the facilities, the modernity of the equipment, but at a lower price. If you go to a social welfare public hospital, the lower level, expect to pay about 150,000 baht. So I think that gives you a really good idea about kind of the typical price differential between these different types of hospital and how you can save a lot of money if you don't have insurance. If you do have insurance, they're gonna give you an approved list of hospitals on their network, and you're gonna find some of these hospitals listed that I've mentioned as some of the best ones in the country. Another resource I would encourage you to take advantage of if you have health insurance, and this is a good reason to get health insurance, is to talk to your health insurance agent because he or she, assuming that they're in Thailand, they've got their ear to the ground. I mean, this is their business, this is their industry. So they're gonna know not only the, the typically best hospitals in your region, but they're gonna know for your specific condition, which is the best hospital, maybe the best doctor. I mean, they want you to be healthy. <laughs> they want you to be happy. They want you to be living and keep paying insurance policies. <laughs> So um, they're really a good resource. And if you need a recommendation for an agent, I don't mind giving you one. Um, I did a, uh, a video on uh, buying insurance in Thailand, health insurance. I'll leave a link for that at the end, so please don't leave yet. And in that video, I talked about a uh, brokerage. And they're really good if you're getting health insurance just to satisfy a visa. Uh, some visa types require that you have health insurance, and they've got some great super, super cheap policies. But if you're gonna be a long-term resident in Thailand, well, even if you're not, I mean, you want good health insurance if you can get it. So an actual individual agent, I think, can be a very valuable uh, person for you. 
As far as finding a good insurance agent in Thailand, I recommend you talk to your friends and see what they have to say, both expats and Thais. If you're out of the country and you need to get insurance from your home country within Thailand before you come, or if you just don't really know who to ask here, I will give you a recommendation. His name is Nat. Here's his contact information. I keep him away from my girlfriend, Joy, because he's way too good looking. He speaks perfect English. In fact, he was actually educated in uh, the UK. So very nice guy to talk to. You're welcome to say that Randy from Retired Global Life sent you. I'm sure he'll treat you extra well and uh, maybe buy me lunch. Hospitals, of course, each have their own pharmacy, but you don't usually want to get your medication at the hospital pharmacy. I just did a video just last week on how to get the best deal and find the best pharmacies. I'll leave a link for that at the end. Just for right now, let me say that typically at a hospital, you're going to pay about double for any kind of medication. So the only time that you want to get medication at a hospital, at least in my opinion, is if you can't get that same medication elsewhere. But typically a pharmacy is going to have almost everything that's prescribed by a hospital. In my video though, which I hope you'll watch next, um, I didn't talk about specific pharmacies. I just talked about my own pharmacy, but I didn't identify it. Uh, but I thought it'd be helpful just to give you some specific names uh, regarding getting prescriptions filled. Um, in my hometown of Chiang Mai, I'm going to give you two names that actually aren't my pharmacies. These were given to me uh, in the comments by one of my best subscribers who is incredibly knowledgeable about uh, Chiang Mai and he always gives great advice so I trust him enough to pass on what he says. So he highly recommends these two pharmacies, Ruam Cho and Da Ra. Um, now you might be wondering why don't I tell you the pharmacy that I go to. The reason I can't is because in my pharmacy video I shared the story that my pharmacist is incredibly beautiful and she always spends so much time with me whenever I go in. So if I tell you the name of the pharmacy, all of you guys are going to descend on this poor woman um, and uh, I'm not going to be special anymore. So I can't tell you the pharmacy that I go to. <laughs> I'm going to keep that my own secret. If you're out of Chiang Mai or even in Chiang Mai, but if you're in Bangkok or any other city, a really good chain pharmacy is Fascino. Um, for us Westerners, it looks like you'd say it Fascino, but in Thailand they say Fascino. Um, and in my pharmacy video, I talked about how you normally want to avoid chain pharmacies, the big ones like Boots and Watsons, because they cost a lot more. Um, Fascino is a chain, but it's, it's, a, it's a smaller one. You're not going to find them in the big malls or in the really high rent locations. They tend to have very good pharmacists, English speaking. Um, so that's a really good option almost anywhere in Thailand. If you happen to be an American watching this and you're either visiting Thailand on vacation or you're moving here or you live here presently, you might be wondering, can you use your Medicare? The answer overall is no. Medicare does not cover you overseas. But there is kind of a secret loophole that you can use for emergency care. Um, and I did a video on that. So I'm going to leave a link and that's really helpful for Americans that are overseas. Okay guys, we're all done talking about hospitals in Thailand. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, I hope you give this video a like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Uh, a lot of what I do is informational like this, but Joy and I also do a lot of videos just showing you around Thailand and how to have a good time. So uh, we've got those as well. Um, there's going to be links at the end on the videos that I talked about. I hope you'll check them out. Until I see you again, safe travels and sawatika. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times.